Throughout most of my career as a developer, I've chased promotions, job titles, and the myth of job security only to realize I was doing it all wrong. Look, I've spent over 20 years in software, and in that time, I've played nearly every role you can imagine, from QA tester to developer, all the way up to principal engineer. In this video, I'm going to distill two decades of wins, failures, and hard-won lessons into 42 principles that can help you build a more successful and fulfilling career. And make sure you stick around till the end, because I'm going to share the biggest lie developers still believe today. Hi, I'm James. I help software engineers feel more satisfied in their jobs. If you're looking for honest, actionable advice on how to thrive in your career, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. So let's get into the lessons. To keep them organized for you, I've broken this video down into four main sections. First, we'll cover the craft of software development. Then we'll move into career strategy and mindset. After that is productivity and personal systems, which is probably my favorite section. And finally, we'll wrap up with health and personal discipline. All right, let's dive in. Lesson one, understand that code is a liability, not an asset. When I started my career, I used to think that writing lots of code made me a better or more important developer. But I've learned that writing code isn't the goal at all. Solving the problem is. Look, every line of code you write is a future cost. It has to be maintained, updated, tested, and understood by others. Always aim for the simplest solution to the problem. Lesson two, mastery isn't about knowing everything. It's knowing how to learn anything, even before AI. Technology and frameworks, they were always changing. The only difference is now it's happening at an even faster pace. But the fundamentals never change. Problem solving, system design, your ability to learn quickly. Just focus on those core skills. Lesson three, remember coding is just a tiny part of your job. This is especially true as you become more senior. You'll find yourself writing less code and spending more time doing things like communicating with stakeholders, debating trade-offs, designing systems, and probably mentoring others. Lesson four, slow down and understand the problem before building anything. I've made this mistake countless times. I'd quickly read a design brief, listen to a stakeholder for a few minutes, and then built some app that was nothing what the customer actually wanted. Instead, really slow down. Whiteboard the solution first write some pseudocode and actually talk to your stakeholders again. Lesson five, users don't care about perfect code. They just want something that works. The people using your software have no idea if it's written in Go, C Sharp or Visual Basic. Well, actually they might be a bit bored if it was Visual Basic, but really they just want a solution that solves their problem. On a similar theme, the best tool for the job is often the one you already know. Look, there's always some fancy new framework or AI model that promises to do everything better. But ask yourself, how long would it really take you and your team to get good at it? Your deep expertise in a so-called boring technology almost always beats surface level knowledge of a trendy one. Solve the problem. Don't just switch to something else for the sake of it. Lesson seven. Be humble with your code and don't get attached to it. I've seen so many great developers make this mistake. They get defensive during pull requests and they treat suggestions for improvements like some sort of personal attack. But your code isn't you. A comment on a PR isn't criticism, it's collaboration. Lesson eight, fix root problems, not just surface level bugs. We've all seen those quick and easy fixes that only patch the surface but taking that path doesn't solve the fundamental issue deeper in the code base. It might mean taking extra time to refactor, but that investment prevents countless future bugs and saves so much time in the wrong run. Lesson nine, document your design decisions. Look, you probably already know it's important to document the what in your code, but I'd argue it's even more important to document the why. So why did you choose that database? Why did you avoid that particular library? It's amazing how quickly we forget the reasoning behind a particular choice. And the final lesson for this section, release early, get feedback, and improve quickly. And this principle goes way beyond just software. Look, waiting for perfection is a trap. The fastest way to replace your assumptions with real world feedback is to ship an early version. Okay, those first 10 lessons will make you a more efficient developer, but what about a more valuable one? 
In this next section, we're focusing on career growth and mindset. So lesson 11 is to acknowledge that your career is a product and you are the product manager. That means you're in charge of setting the direction and the roadmap for where it is you actually want to go. It also means that you own the outcome, whether that's good or bad. Lesson 12 is don't just climb the career ladder, question if it's leaning on the right wall. In our day-to-day -day work, it's so easy to get sucked into the routine and not really think about whether we're on the right path. I'd suggest to always be evaluating where you are and whether it's still right for you. Next lesson, and this might be something of a hot take, but soft skills are 10 times more important than hard skills. This is especially true in the AI age. Honestly, I've never been that good at writing code. I really don't think of myself as a particularly good developer, but I focused on building my soft skills. So things like how to communicate, how to network, how to understand people, how to be productive. As you progress in your career, you end up writing less code anyway and focusing more on the wider impact you can make. The next lesson is to promote yourself relentlessly. I know for most of us developers, the idea of blowing our own trumpet can feel really uncomfortable, but I've seen so many great developers become frustrated and disheartened because they didn't get the credit they deserved, simply because they didn't know how it was they should be promoting themselves. Learn that it's not a bad thing to share your wins. Don't be afraid to show what it is you bring to the table. Lesson 15 take on responsibility. Now I know this can feel scary, especially early in your career, but it's one of the fastest ways to grow. When you truly own something, whether it's a project, a feature, or even a messy problem that nobody wants, you start to care on an entirely different level. Lesson 16 is a fun one. Invest in yourself. Set aside time and money for your growth. Buy the course, read the book, or hire the coach. The same goes for your tools. If you need a better laptop or a microphone or a camera, anything that will make you more effective, then that's gonna be a smart investment. Lesson 17, prioritize gaining domain knowledge. This is crucial if you're in a full-time job or a long-term contract. With AI making pure technical skills more of a commodity, your real value shifts. What makes you truly indispensable isn't just your code, it's your deep understanding of the business, its systems and its customers. Lesson 18, share your knowledge freely. Look, I struggled with this one for a long time. I used to have this weird scarcity mindset, worrying that if I shared my secrets, it would somehow make me less valuable. The truth is most information is out there already. The real value isn't in hoarding it, it's in being the one who shares it. When you're the one actively teaching and providing insight, people start to see you differently, not just as an expert, but as a leader. Lesson 19, network. Now, as an introvert, this is something I still struggle with massively, but I know how crucial it is. And networking doesn't have to mean awkward conferences or forcing conversations. It can be a thoughtful comment on a post or a DM on social media. Your career growth is ultimately limited by the people you know and the rooms you're in, both digital and physical. Here's a practical tip that has helped me, especially as an introvert. Batch it. Set aside one hour a week dedicated only to networking. Go through your contacts or social media. Leave thoughtful comments or better yet, start genuine conversations in DMs. Lesson 20, always be looking for a new job. This isn't the 90s. The average tenure in a tech role is incredibly short. The best time to look for a job is when you already have one. This isn't about disloyalty, it's important to say. It's about empowerment. Knowing your options means you're never trapped in a role that no longer serves your growth or ambitions. Lesson 21, learn to negotiate your salary. This is critical, especially when starting a new job. Your initial salary sets the baseline for every future raise you get at the company. And remember, this doesn't have to be confrontational. It's a standard business discussion. Lesson 22, and this is an important one, don't become good at something you hate. This is a surprisingly easy mistake to make. I've made it myself and I've seen many developers do the same thing. They get really good at a specific area of development because it pays well, it has high demand, or it's just what they were told to do. But they don't actually enjoy it at all. The problem manifests a few years down the line. They now have deep knowledge in an area they dislike and they feel trapped because that's what they're known for and that's what they have the experience in. The trick is to check in with yourself often. Honestly, ask if this is something you genuinely enjoy and can see yourself doing for a long time. 
All right, let's move on to a section I'm really passionate about, productivity and personal systems. We've just talked about big career strategies like networking and finding a new job, but none of that matters if you're too buried in daily work to actually execute on these. Lesson 23, have a good productivity system. Honestly, this is the single most important thing I've ever done. It's made the biggest impact, not just on my career, but on my entire life. A few years ago, I read the book, Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte, and it changed everything. The core idea is simple. Your brain is for having ideas, not holding them. Trying to store all your tasks, notes, and thoughts in your head is mentally exhausting. It kills your creativity and makes it impossible to focus. By building a trusted digital system to capture everything, you free up your mind to do what it does best solve problems. Now, this is a topic I'm incredibly passionate about, and I know that starting a system from scratch can be the hardest part. So to help you get started today, I've created a free one page tool for you. It's a simple template that combines the most powerful habits we're about to cover in the next few lessons. You can claim it for free by simply clicking the link in the description below. Lesson 24, start a journal. Now I have some strong opinions on this. Firstly, it has to be digital and it has to be low friction. I've spent years trying both. And in today's world, digital wins hands down. The biggest problem with paper isn't that it's slow. It's that there's no recall. I have stacks of old handwritten journals somewhere and those insights are essentially lost forever. The second rule is to make it low friction. My best advice here is to always write less than you want to. I use a simple free prompt template for this. One win for the day, one challenge I faced, and one thing I'm grateful for, and that's it. Lesson 25, and this one is related to the last one, plan tomorrow tonight. This simple act also lets your brain truly rest at night, knowing the plan is already set. It's a five minute investment that pays huge dividends in focus the next morning. Lesson 26, block out focus zones for deep work. This is the crucial next step. I learned this idea from Cal Newport's amazing book, Deep Work. Block out two to three hour chunks in your calendar where you're completely unreachable. For a developer, this isn't a nice to have. It's the only way to make meaningful progress. Lesson 27, work on one thing at a time. For a software developer, context switching is kryptonite. Here's the simple system I use. At the start of the day, I define my three most important tasks. Then I circle the single most important one. That task becomes my only priority. I don't touch the others until that one task is finished, even if it takes the entire day. Lesson 28, do the hard task first. This concept comes from the famous book, Eat That Frog, and it really works. The logic is so simple. Your willpower and focus are at their absolute peak in the morning. Use that prime energy on your single most important and difficult task. That one big win creates powerful momentum that then carries you through the rest of the day. Lesson 29, be ruthless with your calendar. In my early career, I accepted every meeting invite I got. I was afraid I'd miss something important or I wouldn't seem like I was being a team player. But I learned a hard lesson. Meetings are destroyers of deep work. It's not just the hour in the meeting it's the half hour before when you can't get started on anything new and then the half hour afterwards when you're trying to get your focus back. Three badly placed meetings can wipe out an entire day's productivity. Lesson 30, use the two minute rule to beat procrastination. Look, we all procrastinate and we all know that feeling of dread when facing a big task. This is the trick that actually works. The next time you're avoiding something, don't think about the whole project. Just ask yourself, what is a two minute version of this that I can do now? So for a coding task, that might be opening your IDE and reading the last line of code you wrote, or maybe just running the unit tests or reading the first two paragraphs of the documentation, just something really simple. You give yourself full permission to stop after two minutes. But here's the thing you almost never do. Just starting is the hardest part. Once that initial friction is gone, then momentum takes over. And before you know it, you're deep into the important work you were avoiding. Lesson 31, use music to focus. The right music is actually scientifically proven to help you get into a flow state and concentrate for longer. That's also why I believe a pair of good noise cancelling headphones is one of the best productivity investments a developer can make. This is especially true in a noisy office. Not only do they help you concentrate, but they also act as a subtle do not disturb sign, signaling to everyone that you're in deep work mode and shouldn't be interrupted. Lesson 32, turn your webcam on. In 
our remote first world, your webcam is your digital body language. And so many developers get this wrong. A blank screen just looks like disengagement. It's better to not be there at all than to be a silent blank square on the screen. The second part of this is your background. Look, it doesn't need to be a movie set. Just keep it tidy and non-distracting. Still with me? Great. We're in the home stretch and we're talking about the one thing that underpins everything else health and discipline because what good is a perfect calendar if you're too exhausted to follow it lesson 33 prioritize your health and fitness above everything else if you feel stuck in your career or any part of your life the first question to ask is are you fit are you working out regularly if the answer is no that's the very first thing to fix it's the foundation for everything else it fuels your focus your creativity and your resilience lesson 34 Discipline is freedom. I'll be honest, this is a lesson I only truly understood recently because it sounds completely backwards. The discipline to get up early, to exercise and to consistently work on your most important projects, it doesn't trap you, it liberates you. It frees you from the stress of procrastination and the anxiety of inaction. Lesson 35, get up at the same time every single day. It leads to better sleep quality and more consistent energy levels. Lesson 36, keep commitments to yourself. Every time you tell yourself, tomorrow I'll start exercising or tomorrow I'll start on that project. When you repeatedly break these promises, you erode your self-trust. The way out of it is to start small. Lesson 37, walk daily. This might be my personal favorite. Get into the habit of going outside and walking every single day, even if it's just for a few minutes. It lets you clear your head, process your thoughts, and get some light exercise. Lesson 38, read more books. Make a point to reread books you found impactful. It's amazing how much you forget, but also how much new wisdom you'll absorb when you return to a book from a different stage in your life. Lesson 39, listen to audiobooks. Audiobooks unlock all the time you thought you didn't have. Something you can learn while you're walking or commuting or doing chores in the house. Lesson 40, don't compare yourself to anyone else. The only person you should compare yourself to is who you were yesterday. Look, we're all on different journeys with different backgrounds and circumstances. There'll always be someone with different gifts or a head start. Comparing yourself to others is a game you just can't win. It's a lose-lose situation. Lesson 41, keep your word. This is another one of those simple truths that many of us learn the hard way, but it's the foundation of your reputation. If you say you'll reply to an email, reply to the email. If you promise an update, then provide the update. If you realize you can't deliver on a promise, then just communicate that proactively. And for our final lesson, number 42, the most important one of all. Job security is a myth. Career security is about building skills and a reputation that are portable. I've seen too many brilliant engineers get burned by this. They spend years, even decades, at a company that preaches, we're all a family, only to discover one day their access card no longer works. It's a harsh reality in our industry. This is why you must take complete ownership of your career. Your employer isn't your family. They are your most important client. And you're not just an employee, you are a business of one. The skills you build, the network you create, the reputation you earn, those are your true assets. So there you have it, 42 lessons from a 42 year old. But if you remember only one thing, let it be this. Your career is yours to build. You are the CEO of your own life. Finally, if this video was valuable to you, a thumbs up is always appreciated and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss what's next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.